So Cy Cyprus is the third largest island in the Mediterranean, located at the easternmost part of the region. And what is most significant about it as an island is that for at least the six, uh, the last six million years or so, has not been connected to the surrounding mainland with any form of land bridge or even stepping stones. This has led researchers to uh, the theory that it was a marginal part of the Mediterranean world, isolated from the developments in uh, the broader area, until the development of the technological and cognitive skills that enabled humans to navigate not only the sea, but also the harsh and inhospitable, presumably, um, insular environment. So the material record uh, on uh, Cyprus for the time period uh, we are interested in goes as far back as 12,000 years ago. Uh, at the very uh, end of the Pleistocene, we have uh, limited evidence for um, short-term visits. And it's not until the beginning of the Holocene that we see the first permanent settlements. That's a very, very, very brief overview of what's happening. During that time, we also uh, document the uh, presence and circulation of um, items made of exotic raw materials. And this could suggest, uh, I will argue that it does, uh, contact with the, uh, the rest of the Mediterranean world. Um, so arguing, in fact, that Cyprus was not as isolated as um, usually postulated. So we have uh, stone tools made of obsidian, we have ornaments made of carnelian, both materials are of exotic origin, uh, so they have come um, to Cyprus from elsewhere. The top maps show the distribution of archaeological sites using carnelian and obsidian uh, on Cyprus throughout the early Holocene, and the two bottom um, large-scale maps uh, indicate geological occurrences of these raw materials, respectively. Another thing to keep in mind is that um, not all Neolithic sites on Cyprus utilize exotic uh, raw materials. I don't know if you can see these um, little yellow dots are more or less contemporaneous sites with the blue dots, uh, but they don't have any evidence for the exploitation of exotic raw materials. So we um, wanted interested to try and um, reconstruct, if, um, if I may say, uh, the social landscape of Cyprus during the early Holocene by trying to define uh, the number of exotic sources being represented in our assemblages. And the way we went about doing that was uh, using non-destructive portable X-ray fluorescence spectrometry to analyze complete obsidian and carnelian assemblages from early Holocene uh, Cypriot sites. Um, we analyzed about a little over 600 artifacts, the vast majority of which is uh, obsidian, from eight different uh, early Holocene sites. Now, to summarize the results of this uh, long time uh, um, elemental characterization, I put these two graphs up here. Starting with carnelian, uh, the elemental composition of the artifacts suggests that we have at least two different um, geological sources of carnelian uh, represented in our assemblage. Um, now, small parentheses, uh, PXRF and carnelian may not work super well together, but this is just a starting point. Uh, another interesting um, uh, result that we got is that these two artifacts here that were previously misidentified as carnelian were in fact made of calcite that was stained orange. Now, Calcite is quite a common material, but it could also be exotic, may not, we don't know yet. Uh, hopefully in the future we will be able to uh, fingerprint it if, uh, if we get the, um, the money to do some very detailed analysis. Uh, with regards to obsidian, we were able to um, uh, 
use the elemental signatures to, um, to get four different, three to four different sources. Uh, and Obsidian and PXRF work really well together, so we analyzed some geological samples from known sources in Anatolia, and we were able to provenance the vast majority of our artifacts to uh, the central Anatolian sources of predominantly Goludak, where the star is on the map, and to a lesser extent, uh, Nenezi Dag. There remains, however, a, a number of artifacts, 15 to 20 artifacts, that do not um, uh, tightly cluster with any of our uh, geological uh, source material uh, data. So this could suggest uh, addition, well, it suggests additional sources, and I think that based on the similarity of the elemental composition, the, these sources should be sought also in Anatolia. Um, we'll run some additional analysis once we get some more geological samples, and I believe we will be able to pinpoint the exact sources. So to put all this information into a more social context, the presence of uh, exotic raw materials and items made of exotic raw materials on Cyprus uh, suggests uh, that we have multiple communication pathways between Cyprus and the mainland during the early Holocene. And of course, this communication uh, and exchange of items, among other things, uh, required seafaring. And um, I see two potential routes for this uh, communication, these networks. A direct one from Anatolia reaching, uh, reaching the northern coast of Cyprus, and um, a southern one from the Levantine coast reaching Cyprus to, uh, from the south to the south. We know that during that time, obsidian circulates widely uh, in the Levant, so it is not unlikely that some of that Anatolian obsidian actually circulated in uh, the Levant and reached Cyprus that way, rather than directly. Uh, once on the island, there are uh, exotics uh, uh, circulate following coastal routes. This is the map here. Coastal routes predominantly, or uh, rivers. And this may be the explanation as to why our more inland Neolithic sites don't actually appear to participate in those um, networks of exchange. Um, I now wanted to open another small parenthesis and actually repeat more or less what Carol was saying. We have established the import of exotics to Cyprus from the mainland. But it doesn't seem, uh, it, it doesn't have to be that uh, the directionality of movement is one way. And I wanted to, I have to give just one example to think about this, um, uh, this issue uh, with the green stones uh, that Carol already mentioned. So Cyprus has excellent uh, quality of a, a very rare resource, the picrolite. It's a very nice, soft, green, uh, raw material that occurs on the southwestern part of the island, and it is used for ornaments. Uh, we have documented a use of greenstone ornaments all along the Levant, and it is very likely that some of that material is actually Cypriot picrolite. All we have to do is get the permits and run the analysis. So just something to think about. Uh, the next question I wanted to ask was, why did these early Cypriot communities undertake all these efforts to acquire just a few pieces of rock? Right? The quantities we are uh, talking about are very small. And also, with regards to obsidian, which is used exclusively for stone tools, uh, we have excellent quality chert on Cyprus. Carol already discussed that. I mean, there is a lot of it, and it's very very good for napping. We don't need to uh, get on a boat, get contacts, uh, 
to Anatolia or anywhere else in the Levant to get just a few pieces of obsidian. So I think the answer to this question is linked to the uh, aesthetic attributes of these raw materials. Their color, which is quite distinctive, but also their brilliance and their transparency. These are all visual attributes that, from an anthropological perspective, attract the human brain in a way that artifacts, objects, and materials that don't share these qualities cannot do. And so I would suggest that the uh, exotics that we see on Cyprus during the early Holocene were, in fact, um, items of special social value. They were symbols that were linking humans on the island with maybe specific places or specific populations or even individuals in the mainland that were significant to these early Cypriots on an emotional or social um, degree. And um, this ability to maintain uh, a strong bond at great distances and without the need for face-to-face -face interactions, what is called like, symbols of relatedness, is an excellent, I think, a very smart survival strategy, especially when you're navigating, when you're exploring a new and potentially unknown territories. So just to sum up, um, Cyprus, is traditionally perceived and as a, a marginal, isolated part of the Eastern Mediterranean world on the basis of it being an island. The presence of um, exotic items from multiple sources uh, suggests that, in fact, the early Holocene Cypriot communities were linked to their um, mainland counterparts with communication and exchange networks that may not have been very intensive, but I believe they were continuous. And uh, uh, objects made of carnelian and obsidian being very aesthetically um, pleasing and distinctive items, I think, help them to maintain this strong bond. That's it. Thank you.